Good afternoon, and welcome to this program of the University of Washington Libraries. I'm Paul Constantine. I use he, him pronouns, and I serve as Associate Dean for University Libraries for Distinctive Collections. As we begin, let's take a moment to acknowledge and reflect on the lands on which we reside. Due to COVID-19 and remote learning, our University of Washington community is spread out across the globe. We would like to take a moment to acknowledge all of the ancestral homelands and traditional territories of indigenous people who have been here since time immemorial. The University of Washington acknowledges the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Duwamish, Puyallup, Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Today, we gather to hear a reading of one of the founding documents of the United States, the Constitution, which was written in Philadelphia in 1787 and signed on the homelands of the Lenape people, the indigenous people forced from their homelands under threat of violence in the 18th century as a result of European colonization. If you don't know the ancestral lands on which you reside, you can search your current location on the Canadian website native-land.ca to learn more. Acknowledging the ceded and unceded land on which we all stand could not be more important in our current historical moment or for those of us participating in this event today. Much has changed in our lives in 2020. As individuals, we may feel isolated and lonely when facing struggles and uncertainty. But today's shared reading is about our commonality and community. All of us live with this resource as our federal governing document. It is within our power to amend the document as legislators did 100 years ago in passing the 19th Amendment codifying women's right to vote. Thousands of people participate in public readings of the Constitution annually, mostly on Constitution Day, September 17th. We prefer to hold our reading when classes are in session. This effort is aided by the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, who provided today's edition of the Constitution. We thank staff from the Susalo and Allen Libraries and the Odegaard Undergraduate Library for organizing today's event. 130 years ago, Congress designated the University of Washington Libraries as a special place to collect, preserve, and provide access to official government documents, a federal depository library. We have collected over 1.5 million documents and our collections are still growing. Our librarians also assist users in finding their way through the nearly 200 million distinct URLs that exist on the .gov and .military, .mil, I should say, internet domains. As a depository library, we are a location of civic engagement, which leads me to ask, have you registered to vote? If not, the deadline to be able to vote in the November 3rd general election is eight days prior to election day for online or mail-in registrations that's October 26th, or election day itself, if you go to your county elections office in person. See our library's online guide entitled Election 2020 for more information. Today's reading was produced over the last two months as 100 participants video recorded themselves reading the Constitution from home. Students, faculty, staff, librarians, alumni, retirees, children, friends, sometimes with their pets helping out. We are all grateful for your labor. This year, we are delighted that Dr. Sarah Curran and Dr. Camille Walsh will preface our reading with brief reflections about two topics related to the Constitution. Professor Curran on the census and Professor Walsh on voting rights. We thank them for their expertise and insights. Professor Sarah Curran earned her doctorate in sociology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. 
She is a professor of international studies and sociology and director of the Center for Studies in Demography and Ecology at UW Seattle. Her interests include migration, globalization, gender, climate change and adaptation, and development. In June, Dr. Curran and her colleagues were awarded a National Science Foundation rapid grant to study dem demographic and social disparities in responses to COVID-19 information and dis or misinformation. Dr. Curran, welcome. 